from Zoyuit Snomer in Hollywood. It's the, 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 the Tom Micah Show. B I T C H. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. The different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. Let me ask you this question. You're probably like me if you're a guy. You listen to this show. You like banging broads. You like getting laid. Think that's funny, Art? Getting laid? You think that's funny? Nothing funny about it. It's deadly serious. Getting laid. Banging chicks. Very important. I think the average man listening to this program knows how important it is. Talk to a guy today, as a matter of fact, a listener... I think he wishes he had followed my advice and just bang chicks. He is uh, currently uh, paying. Since we don't know who he is, I'll uh, I'll tell you. Told me today he's paying eighteen thousand dollars a month in vagina money. It's true. This guy told me. Again, since we don't know who he is, it could be anybody, right? Guy told me today that he was with a chick who was hot, hot, hot. She looked like Angelina Jolie. She had a couple of minor issues, like she attempted to slit her wrists a few times and things like that. But she was hot. So, of course, he was in lust. But pretty soon there he was with the love of his life uh, trying to conceive children. And uh, for the longest time, they couldn't get pregnant. They couldn't do it. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> six years in, I guess she took some shots or something, and it took. She got pregnant. So what'd she do? She hightailed it out of California, moved to Texas, and hired an attorney. She told him she was divorcing him, and she was going over there to get uh, her child support, but she she managed to, uh, to nail him for alimony under California law eight $18,000 a month for three and a half years, half the length of the marriage. By the way, that's $216,000 a year. Okay? That is $756,000 total. Are you hearing me? $756,000 in vagina money. And I said to him, that would have, must have been one great lady. Yeah. <laughs> she was. But now he has to pay her $756,000 plus child support. For a child that lives in Texas? Fantastic. You know, many times we're banging a chick and we really should just bang her. We really should just bang her. And it doesn't matter how hot she is or how much time she spends around the house or how many trips you take with her. In reality, you should bang her. And then when she finally starts to, you know, lay it on thick, when she starts telling you she loves you, it's time to go. It's time to go. I've done this in my life, and that's why I know why you do it, okay? Sometimes when you're with somebody for a period of time and they start to fall in love with you, you stay with them because the sex is so good or because they're so hot. 
And then at some point you feel like a heel. Like, what would happen if you told her, you know what, I don't love you, I just love effing you. What would happen? She'd cry. She might get angry and stab her little feet. She might throw things. So what happens is we, we let ourselves get involved in relationships where what we really should have done is just say, you know what, it's been great effing you. And now that there's a price to be paid, uh, I'm going to leave. I always talk to you about leasing the car rather than buying it or test driving a vehicle. You know, well, you test drive a Testarossa, and then the salesman says, okay, what would it take to get you to buy this car today? Your response would be, think of it that way, okay? Ever done this? Ever gone to a car dealer and test driven a car you can't afford? You try to pass yourself off as a potential buyer? Come on, we've all wanted to drive that one dream car, right? Testarossa. Uh, some kind of Porsche 911 or some such. You know, a Maybach, a Rolls Royce. How many of you have done that? You go to the dealer showroom and you say, yep, you know what? I might be in the market for something like this. You know you couldn't afford it in your dreams, but you're like, you just wanted to have a chance to drive the car. So you go in, you kick the tires, you try looking important, you wear your best outfit, you get the salesman to take you out for a spin. And that 30 minutes you're behind the wheel of that car, you feel pretty damn good. People are seeing you in that expensive, fantastic vehicle. You never look better than sitting behind the wheel of that sports car, that that dream vehicle, <laughs> driving a Bentley. Ever driven a Bentley? Oh, my. 600 plus horsepower vehicle. It looks perfect. So you're done driving it, right? And you're done. You've just spent 30 of the greatest minutes of your life feeling and looking important. And more importantly, enjoying how that feels. And you get back to the showroom and the salesperson says to you, what would it take to get you to buy this vehicle today? And what do you say to him? That's right. You say, to him, that's exactly right. That's what you say to him. You say, let me think about it and I'll get back to you. Okay. So now let's make your dream vehicle that really hot chick, the one that looks like Angelina Jolie. Just tried to slit her wrist a few times. You know, when you meet somebody like that, you want to test drive that vehicle? Oh, yes. You'd like to slip into the driver's seat. Put your hand on the stick. See how it drives. Ooh. Has that new car smell. Rides like a dream. You look great sitting in it. But then finally, when the salesperson says, what would you pay? What would you pay if, <laughs> what would it take to get you to buy this vehicle today? What would you pay for this vehicle? You you shouldn't give a price. You shouldn't pay the price. You should tell the salesman, who is also the vehicle, you should say, well, let me think about that. So when you have had sex with an incredibly beautiful woman, and maybe you've been having sex with her for a couple of weeks, a couple of days, a couple of months, whatever, and finally, you know how they get, right? They They don't want you test driving the vehicle. They want you to, you know, put some money down. When they try to get you to commit... That's when it's time to say, I, so I'm going to think about this, or I'm out of here, or you know what, I just can't commit to purchasing a vehicle at this time, and then leave the showroom. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I know there are those of you out there right now who are enjoying a good bang, maybe um, on a regular basis, with, with a chick who's so hot you can't stand it, but guess what? You're just not in the mood for commitment. And some of you know, you're the ones I'm talking to right now, some of you know that that girl starts looking at you with those puppy dog eyes, and you know she wants to have the talk. You know she wants to get into that conversation. They just want to know 
where I stand with you. What am I to you? Am I your pal? Am I your lover? Am I your girlfriend? What am I to you? When you talk to your friends about me, what do you tell them I am? You know, just some, just some tart that you take advantage of? Do you tell them you love me? What do you tell people? We've all had this conversation, right? I just don't know what... My sister says to me, what does he tell people? And you know, I hadn't thought about it. Now that I think about it, she's right. I don't know what I am to you. I don't know where this is going. Where is this going? All I'm asking for is for you to tell me where this is going. I just need to know. I need to be able to tell my mother what you are. Are you my boyfriend? Are you like just some guy I'm having sex with? Oh, my God. Don't tell me that. Please. That's the time you have to get up and say, you know, uh, tell the seven. <laughs> Let me think about that, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> and then get out of the showroom. That's what you have to do. You got to get out of the goddamn showroom because they're gonna they, any minute now. She's gonna stop crying, and she's gonna tell you that she's gonna go back to her manager and see if uh, she'll accept that price. <laughs> Just sit here. I'll go back to the finance department. <laughs> No, 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 no. You need to get out before you be, before you get to the manager's office where they're going to find out, uh, you know, whether you're going to take low jack and whether you're going to take the extra insurance and, you know, what terms are going to be for the financing. Before you get back into that room, you've got to just say, I need to leave the showroom and think about this and then get the hell out of there. But I know there are those of you out there right now, right now, banging broads. These are broads who you know you are not up for a relationship. You are not in love. You may never be in love. You may never be in love with anybody, but you know you're not in love with this chick. Even if you want to someday get married, settle down, and have children, you know this one's not the one. I mean, come on. Somebody looks like Angelina Jolie, but she slit her wrist several times. Come on. That's a red flag. Okay, that's where you say, you know what? It's been great banging you, <laughs> but but I'm not buying this vehicle. You got to say that. You got to say that. Got to. So, I'm wondering how. By the way, we've had this conversation with our own Dean J. D'Amelio, who from time to time over the years has been with somebody who was in love with him, and he bragged about the fact that the, some particular girl was in love with him. And he claimed that even though she was in love with him, he couldn't care less about her. And at some point, he's just going to kick her the hell out. That's going to be it. You can hear him laughing down the hallway because he knows it's true. I mean, how many of you do this? How many of you have a girl who follows you around like a little puppy dog? And yeah, they, You know what they start doing, right? They start coming to your house and making meals for you, and they start doing all these domestic things, and they start inadvertently leaving their stuff around your house and stuff like that. You know what I'm talking about. You know where they're heading with that. And yet you just kind of see how long you can push it. How long can you get away with banging this chick without saying, I love you, or... You know, uh, one of these days we should talk about the future or anything like that. How many of you have women who are talking about the future? Like, for example, where you're going to go on vacation together next summer. Or where the two of you might buy a house someday. 
Or what would be a good name for a baby? I mean, I, there's all kinds of hints, and a lot of you guys just simply ignore it because you're banging something that you consider to be so hot. You're so in lust. You don't really care that she's in love with you. Now, some of you guys get hoisted by your own petard. Look that expression up, by the way. Uh, some of you get, you know, you, 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 you stay so long in these situations that ultimately you get suckered in. You get pulled into the trap. Suddenly... You know, just like the dolphins, when the guys are out there trying to catch tuna, suddenly you get caught in the net, and you get hauled in, and you weren't intending to get hauled in, and there you are, you've gotten hauled in, and suddenly you're living on Wisteria Lane, and you've got three kids and a MasterCard bill of $78,000. I know you guys are out there. <laughs> I know you are. You write and call me all the time. But I'm wondering how many of you are with somebody right now. You're banging somebody right now who is in love with you. But you don't give a rat's ass about them. Tom Likes. 1 800 5800 Tom. 1 800 5800 866. Man, you know, you need to exterminate this broad on the line, man, because all I'm hearing is me, 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 me. Oh, we're an Afro, man. She's the kind of chick that you talk about all the time, man. It's the Tom Likes Show. The Tom like is show at 1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. All right. You're banging away, having a good time. The other person is in love. <laughs> I want to know all about it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Curtis on the Tom like is show. Hello. Tom, how you doing? Great. Good, sir. All right, I've got these. I'm 19 years old. I've got these two girls lined up. They're both seniors in college. I'm a sophomore right now. Right. One of them's name is Stephanie. One of them's name is Crystal. And they're both out of my league, good looking. We'll put it that way. Um, and I'm nailing both of them. And they neither of them have I have an idea about each other. And they both think I'm just. I mean, they're they're getting to that point where. They want to know, you know, what it's what it's going to turn into. It's probably been about a month with both of them, and uh, they're both just. At, at first, you know, they didn't have that look. When I just got done nailing them, I was like, "All right, I'm leaving." They're like, "Okay, cool. I'll see you at school tomorrow." I'd be like, "All right, bye." Now it's kind of like, "Oh, you're leaving? Why? I want you to stay here." No, no, no. This and this and this, and it's. I got to tell you, it feels great, Tom. It's just awesome. I love that. Now, at some point, they're going to force the issue. What are you going to do? Uh, I, all of my friends know that I'm an avid Likas learner, and I, I think it's more or less their fault that they're going to fall into that trap. So when they do, I'm just going to be like, oh, I don't really think now's a good time. Like, I'm a young single guy. I'm in school. I don't really have time for a relationship. I work full time, and I'm a full time student, and, you know, I'm, I just, I just can't handle that right now. It's me. It's not you. Sorry, though. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So. So hey, whatever. It's it's all it's all for me, I guess. But yeah, I'm having a good time. So absolutely. I mean, the, the the trick is if you never make a promise. Oh, I've. If you never I've, lie and say I love you later on, when they try to say I can't believe you would use me, like how did I use you? I never said I was in love with you. Never taken either of them on a date. Never made any sort of commitment whatsoever. I hooked up with the first one. We were at a party, and then it just you know we just hooked up, and then it was just game on after that so yeah whatever i mean i remember i called you i don't know it was, a, it was a while ago when i had a girlfriend it was actually like last april and uh i left her last april <laughs> and uh it's just been great so far tom i'm love I, that I'm glad, glad to hear like, that very um, nice i'll uh i'll keep listening to you but could you blow me up of course i can The number is 1-800-5800-TOM. This is Jeff on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Jeff. Hey, Tom. Long-time listener, first-time caller. Long-time listener, first-time caller. I love your show, by the way. I think you're awesome. Thank you. I wish I would have listened to your show 20 years ago. I've been married twice. I'm 39. And uh, since my divorce four months ago, I've been dating through the time period. And uh, as your advice, I took your advice 
staunchly, and I've been dating lots of different girls and banging all kinds of chicks. If you only knew, more ass than a toilet seat. Love that. Oh, jeez. And just recently, you know, I've been dating this one for eight months, and I took your advice and just milked it for everything it was worth. A very, very pretty gal from Mexico, and she's 43. Even though she has three kids, she's extraordinarily beautiful. But as beautiful as she is, you know, all of these things came up, and finally the, um, I guess, clamp started a few days ago. And she started this thing where, you know, if you don't start getting more serious with me, I could get a good time anywhere. And I didn't say anything. I just kept my mouth shut. And, you know, you need to get more serious with me. You know, we've been together all this time, and I'm like, we've only been together eight months, and I've never, ever in the relationship ever said I was serious or I wanted any commitments, and I've never said I love you. You know, I just said, I'm here to have a good time. You know, this is not something, I don't know what my long-term plans are, but I don't want to get into anything serious. Uh-huh. And then she starts all this stuff, and it's like, holy buckets. You know, so I, I actually, in a weird way, when I was listening to you, I was like, you know, I said to her, so you really gave me a lot to swallow. I'm going to have to think about that, and I haven't called her since. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I love that. Meanwhile, I've been dating another gal, and uh, she's a model, and she's got, like, implants the whole nine yards and holy buckets you know and the thing is i don't know where to get off on this merry-go-round ride because the prettier and prettier they start getting tom it's it's you can't stop you, there's just no stop to the ride wow why would i, why would I want to stop <laughs> you know and that's the problem is like the prettier the girls and that's the thing is a lot of guys you know, I had to have a sword run through my heart in the second marriage, and I literally had a sword run through my heart. Yeah, I'm paying child support, you know, went through all the emotional issues. That's, you know, all gone. But you literally have to have a sword run through your heart and to, to get a courage to just be able to go and talk to attractive women. The reality is the very, very, very attractive women usually don't get very many dates. <laughs> well, that's what they say anyway. It's, no, it's true. I'm telling you from personal experience, it's true. Well, I've been, I've been telling you that, and I believe that. And, in fact, I've always operated from that standpoint that they a lot of guys are intimidated about going up to them. And hottest chicks have the lowest self-esteem. I absolutely agree with you on that 110%. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. I think you're awesome. I really love your show. Like I said, I wish I would have had it 20 years ago. I would have had a lot more financial security, been a lot better off emotionally, have been a lot more stable. But, you know, you, you just you do your best to make it through life, and, and you know, the hard times come, and I'll, I'll recover from all these things. But I think your show is awesome, and, and I really do think you really do benefit the guys and the women who take the time to listen to you. And uh, I just want you to take me out uh, with a, some kind of a screaming orgasm. Oh, of course I can, Jeff. Oh, oh, God. Oh, yes, yes, yes. It's Steve in Parkland, Oregon, home of the other white meat on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's happening, Tom? Not much. Mark. I'm sorry, this is Steve. I've been uh, listening to you guys a long time. Uh, first time caller. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, I just wanted to call up about this uh, this girl I've been seeing for a little while. I mean, I've been actually thinking about calling you for a little while, but I know what your answer is going to be on this. The thing is, uh, this girl, she's just a uh, dynamo in the bed. You know, it's awesome, awesome time. I've uh, been dating for a little while, and you know how it eventually goes. It's all like, oh, okay, we're not going to be serious. We're just going to have fun. But then after a little while, it gets a little bit more serious. And then she asks me the question, you know, so so what am I to you? How do you describe me to your friend? Just like what you talked about before. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so eventually it's like, well, of course, babe, you're my girlfriend. You know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, you lied. Wait, you lied. <laughs> well, you know, you got to keep the ball rolling. Yeah, my, my fear in telling a lie like that is that they they start putting the pinholes in the condoms. You know what I'm saying? Well, that's the other thing. Is this girl, uh, you know, we were good with the condoms for a while, but she's been on the pill lately. And, that's what uh, she tells you. Well, you know, I I have listened to your show long enough to be wary of that. Uh, she actually has an alarm that goes off every night at the same time, and I watch her do it when I'm around. And you When know, you're I, around. Yeah. Yeah, and that's the other thing, though. It's like whenever, whenever I uh, yeah. Well, of course she loves that because if the pill fails for some reason, uh, she's going to be in the money. Yeah, it just it just makes me worried, you know. I mean, why do you have sex without a condom? Why do you do it? <laughs> it's uh, 
You know, having sex with a condom is like eating steak with a balloon on. You well, know? you know what? You, you get going past, you just can't taste it. You do get used to it, and believe me, uh, for that taste, you know, like, have you ever eaten a uh, Kobe beef steak? Uh, I'm not sure that I have. Have you heard of it? No, I don't think so. That's that uh, steak from Japan. And the horses, I'm sorry, the cows are, the horses, that's, no, the cows are, uh, the cows are massaged and they are given beer and they're given all kinds of special feed. And the result is, um, well, uh, it's this incredibly amazingly marbled beef. It's nothing like the beef in the United States. You really only have to eat a few ounces of it and that you're done. Okay. And most restaurants sell it for about uh, anywhere from 15 to $20 an ounce. Hmm. So uh, you know why you haven't eaten Kobe beef? Uh, probably the expense. You can't afford it. So uh, the point is, <laughs> you talk about eating a steak with a balloon on? Let me ask you a question. 30 seconds of ejaculate, is that worth 18 years of payments? Uh, yeah, not quite. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You'd love Kobe beef if you could taste it. You'd love it. But you'll never taste it because it's too expensive. Well, I mean, the thing is that I'm worried about now is, you know, aside from that, that's, that is an issue definitely to consider. But aside from that, it's just getting to the point now where, where she's kind of getting clingy a little bit. Uh -huh. She keeps wanting more and more of my time. And it's like, you know. That's when they stop using the pill and they're not getting enough attention. Yeah. You're going to get a lot more attention when they call you and go, Oh, Steve. Steve. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. I've, I've I, need been... to, I need to talk to you. Can, do, you have, do you have a few minutes? I need to talk to you. Can, you know what? I, I don't want to do this on the phone. Can you come over right now? Right now. Can you come over right now? Oh, Please. Man. You're like reading the story. It's of important. That call is coming. Uh, yeah. Well, she's got this crazy coworker, and so she keeps calling me up, crying about this girl at work that she can't get deal that she can't deal with, you know. And so she's calling me all the time, like, "What do you think I should do? I got this girl at work. I don't know what to do. She's impossible, and I have to see her every day. I need to talk to you." And I need to talk to you about something else. It's very important. I need you to come over to my apartment tonight so we can have a conversation about something. I have to ask you something. I, to, I want to have something to tell you. And I don't want you to get too upset. But it... I'm telling you, Steve, this is what will happen. So what should I do, Tom? <laughs> you know, I, I said at the beginning of this hour what you should do. You've 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 test driven the, the the Maserati, and now it's time to tell the dealer. You know what? Let me think about that and stop. And you'll just leave the showroom now. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to be sitting in the manager's office de debating financing. Good points. You ever bought a car? Yeah, it's all stuff that's on my mind. You know, I've been thinking yeah. about. It's well, it's time to stop thinking and start doing. Yeah, especially with Valentine's Day coming up pretty quick, right? Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> uh, all right, Tom. Well, uh, take me out with a bong hit, would you? I certainly will. <coughs> Tom. Like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. So, for you, you only get from woman you sex, and that's it. Yes, because that's what women are good for. <gasps> oh, my God. It's the Tom Likey Show. From Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. Thank you for tuning in. All right, there you are, banging away, having a good time, too. <laughs> well, unfortunately, now you're going to find out there's no free lunch because she's starting to say, How do you feel about me? Do you like me? 
can you like not live without me? Oh, I had one like this. <laughs> oh, God. She was young and hot and had a great body, just amazing. She was a young, aspiring model. <laughs> and, uh, oh, boy, she was just wild in the sack, just absolutely great. And I loved it, loved it, loved it. It was just incredible. And it wasn't long before she's like, so, like, did you miss me? And you're going away next week. Are you going to miss me? <laughs> I had to end that. I had to nip that in the bud. <laughs> so thank you for the sex. If you're out there, I enjoyed it very much. But no, I did not miss you when I left town, okay? <laughs> Wherever you are, thank you for the sex. It was great. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Carlos on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. Yes. Tom? Yes. Yes, Tom. This is Carlos. Yes. And I have a very good, uh, well, bad experience and good experience at the same time. Okay. Uh, the, I was listening to you for six months. And I was in the relationship for five years. Uh, as, as, uh, last last three months, um, I have to dump the the beach because um, you know I buy my house like um, the first year we went together, but I buy it by my own. And um, like she started uh, like as maybe one year ago, she tried to. To get, uh, you know, to convince me to get married, and I say, the only way I get married, uh, only with pre now. And then she asked me, "What are you talking about? What is a pre now?" I said, "Well, you, you know, I've been listening to the radio, and I've been listening to Tom Likes, and you know, I just want to know that we we get married, make sure everything I I have is mine, and whatever you have is yours." And then after we have a lot of problems because of that, and uh, I told her, you know, that is the only way I can get married. And she got very, very upset when I told her that. And uh, we have, after that, we have started again too many problems. And, uh, you know, we have to uh, broke out, you know, to separate a part away for, for her because uh, she was taking advantage of me. Uh huh. Because uh, I was paying all the bills, and uh, she was working, and up and, well, she's still working, and uh, she wanna, she don't want to put money, like, you know, she don't want to even buy their own stuff, you know. She wanted to go to the store and buy everything, and uh, the, the only the only thing I just, uh, I told her, you know, I just want you to buy your own stuff, and uh, you don't pay rent, but it's okay, but... After I see, you know, I will listen to you. I say, uh, this girl was taking advantage of me because um, she was saving her money, and then plus that, she want more. And I say, no, there's no way I'm going to do that. So I dumped her like three months ago, like I say. Now I've been dating different girls, and, uh, you know, uh, I don't have to have a commitment. And uh, like you say, now I have more, <laughs> more girls than I've never before. I love that. Yeah. I am so proud of you, Carlos. That's great. And I just want to let you know that, you know, the Latino community, that happens uh, a lot. I don't know why it starts happening more and more. But now uh, girls, they want to take advantage of guys. And, and I guess I was listening to you, and I, I say it's not going to happen to me. Fantastic. I, and do you ever hear from that girl again? Well, yeah, yeah, I hear from girl all the time, all the time. She want to come back and, you know, uh, you know, she want to work out the problems. And I say no, I, uh, I don't want to. If I drop, if I have a old shoes, I'm not gonna wear it never again. So she tried to, you know, to get me in trouble. Like she wants some money because the time that she spent with me, but I never got married, so she couldn't get anything. I love that. <laughs> I'm so proud, well, Carlos. Thank I really you. am. So thank you, Tom. I just want to let you know that the Latino community is listening to you, like me, even though I've been here like about eight years in this uh, this country. 
and um, I try to do my best, and uh, I keep listening to you. It I sounds like you're. It sounds like you're doing great. Yeah, I'm doing great, and uh, you know, I, like you know, I've been have my own house, uh, have a uh, good job on county job, and uh, I've been doing good. So, so now, thank you to you. I just wanted you to let you know that uh, I will take your advice and and be careful with those girls like that. They want to take advantage of, of guys, and but not anymore. Good I learned for my you. lesson, and good for you. I am proud. We keep talking at the same time. Carlos, thank you very much. I'm very proud of you. That's fantastic. Yes. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Sarah on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. It's Sarah. I know. I just said that. Um, I got to tell you, this uh, whole clingy girl thing, it comes in the package of a guy, too, because I just dealt with one for over a year and made it out alive. This guy was, like, the most clingy thing I'd ever dealt with, ever. He, uh, I got with him, met him through some friends, and he seemed super cool, totally not my type, but I thought maybe I'd give it a whirl. And within a month, he was saying, I love you. What do you think? We need to be together forever. And and trying to slap a ring on my finger. And I'm thinking, I'm, you know, at the time I was, I was 19, I'm thinking that's not quite going to work out for me. So, um, you know, we, we kept it going and he increased, um, you know, his feelings, obviously, and was like, we gotta get married now, we gotta make this happen. And, uh, it just kept going and going and going. And, and sure enough, the web kept spinning and, and apart from wanting to get married, I mean, he was talking about baby names and and uh, where we were going to live and places we could move in. And he was close to my age. So to even come up with these ideas at 19, 20, pretty outlandish, uh, you know, I think. Am I right? Of course. Yeah. I mean, uh, it doesn't just come in in the... Uh, that lady package, that's for sure. Because so do you have a boyfriend? I do, I do. I have, he's right Why? Now, Wait, why? Oh, no, this is a different guy. Yeah, I know, he's, but at 20 years old, you don't need any boyfriend. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, he, I've known him my whole life. This is a completely different story. I guess you could say I didn't need a boyfriend at 20, but, but, uh, yeah, it, I, that doesn't really... It doesn't really bother bother me. He's like one of the greatest things that's ever happened. Well, but you're only 20 years old. Plenty of great things could happen to you in the future. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. I got I got everything going for me right now. I'm going to school. I've got a job. You know, so so it's my own life. You know, um, entirely different from anything I'd ever done, which is that clingy, clingy, clingy guy. So, and plus he lives uh, about 300 miles away from me. So we've got that space. What kind of boyfriend is that that lives 300 miles away? You're telling me that you don't get laid on those other nights when he's gone? No, not at all. Not at all. So you don't yeah. like sex that much? Oh, oh yeah, I love it. <laughs> that's, that's, uh... Why would you, if you love sex, why would you agree to have a boyfriend who lives 300 miles away? Because when he's down, it's the best sex I've ever had. Yeah, well, you know, you can get some really good sex that, that might be almost as good that you could get whenever you want it. Yeah, but I want it when he's here. I don't need it because because you don't you know, like it that much. Gone because because uh, most other guys that I get it or have gotten it have been those clingy, crazy dudes. You know, the most laid back guy I've ever dated in my life, and he's three hundred miles away. But again, <sighs> I say the sex is the best. Oh yeah, I've heard this before. All right, darling, thank you so much. Our email address: Tom at blowmeuptom.com. The Tom Likas Show.